Hello everyone. We are ready to do our downtown Hendersonville test. Um, if you didn't see my previous couple videos, as you can see, I have a kayak on the roof. That has a rope going down the middle. And from the previous test, does not affect it at all. A lot of people are saying on my night drive, that's the reason it messed up. I don't think so. You guys are willing to debate it down in the comments down below. But um, it seems to drive just fine with the line and with the bow in the way. The bow is only cutting off a tiny bit of the forward facing camera. Ooh. Hmm. See, stuff like that has never happened before. You, so I drove this on 12.3.4, no problem. Nothing like that. Only 12.3.5 has it done weird swerving stuff like that. And maybe if it keeps on doing it, perhaps it is. Like, I'm not against saying it's that rope right there, guys. But nothing to me has given me concrete evidence to say that rope is causing this car to mess up. <laughs> oh man. That's um, what happened is the car, uh, the rear tire slipped because it went too fast um, over the um, exit right there. It has a very steep incline and if it goes too fast, the tire slips. And so when, the t when you lose traction control, the car kicks off. So this has happened going up the crazy hill test where it went too fast going around the curve and it kicked in traction control and the tires phew, spun around. And that's, that's why that happened. I, the car didn't mess up it, per se. It just it accelerated too quickly. And I'm sure red hands automatically may, uh, make it back to Tesla's data points. So we'll see. So again, we are going 10 mile an hour over the speed limit, not as bad as 15 in the previous video. But again, it's just, well now it's going 13 over. We just got to the 35 right here. So now it's fine. Now it's going a good speed limit. Like it could go 40, but funny enough, it seems to go 35 to 30, this speed, instead of 40. Which doesn't make any sense. Like people, like you're more likely to get a ticket going 10 over and 25 than you are five over and 40. So I don't, I don't, quite understand the logic. Do people drive that way? Maybe people drive that way. I don't. I I just go five over all the time. It's like, it just makes it easy to sit there, sit back, go autopilot, do his thing, and we're, we're comfortable. Like, two, like, an extra five mile an hour past that, you're not saving, you're not saving any time. 30 seconds on your trip, a minute. Like, I don't know. To me, it's, it's not not worth the trade-off. Okay, we're gonna see how it does in this roundabout. This roundabout is always like a good test case because like, does it go fast enough? Does it go too slow? Does it go timid? Does it wait for oncoming traffic? You know, it has to wait. Okay, no it doesn't. Oh yeah, that, so that was great. It slowed down as if that car was gonna continue and it kept on going just like I would do it. I think it's it could reaccelerate a little bit quicker here. Um, that's the only critique I have for that is that it could have sped up, uh, it could have accelerated coming out of the roundabout a little bit sooner. Otherwise, that was perfect. Besides that one little critique, that was really good. That was a good slowdown. There's a motorcycle behind me, so. You I'm always overly cautious with motorcyclists behind me or beside me, and I don't want to brake too hard so they don't slam into the back of me by accident or something like that. You know, always got to be careful around the motorcyclists. But I thought that slowed down very well for that Jeep, very smoothly. Now the key is, how was it gonna get into this lane here? I think the last time I did this, did it mess up? No, it, it did it, but it still didn't do it well. This is good. That, in my opinion, and it should break here, yes. That was much improved. Wait, wait, no, no, don't go, don't run the red light. <laughs> okay, not sure. I mean, I guess it could have pulled, it just pulled up just a little bit more. They give a little bit of space behind, for the car behind me. Maybe that's what I was doing. But um, that was improved. That's how it should be doing it. 
in my opinion. Now, obviously, you went through, you can rewind the video, but it went through the wrong, the opposite turn lane to get to it. That was rather fast acceleration. <laughs> I don't think I needed that fast, but that was really good. Turn the, as soon as the blinking yellow chain on, came on, it committed. That was so nice, because normally in the past, it would be so hesitant at that intersection, crossing with the blinking yellow. That was, that was really good. So that seems maybe that's what 12.3.5 is doing. It's making it a little bit more assertive in certain areas. And this is really good. It didn't completely stop and kept on kind of gliding up to the car behind me and then reaccelerated as you know it realized the cars in front were starting to move again. That's very human-like. I love that behavior. What I don't like and this is because it's being trained off Tesla owners, is that it seems to launch too often. It seems to accelerate too quickly when it comes to, you know, just going around the turn and it accelerates. You know, if I'm driving myself manually, I might drive that way just to have fun. But for a robo-taxi, a taxi that's driving me around and needs to be most comfortable, that's too much acceleration. Let's see how it, how it does this. It needs to do a smooth compound maneuver. A car shows up. In my opinion, it, it, did, this does, it did it fine. Completely fine. It's just too timid, in my opinion. Like before, the previous versions were a little bit more assertive going through that. And I think it did a good job. So, is it going to park? Is it going to park? Come on, park. You can do it. Come on, a little bit more forward. Okay, well, it didn't completely park right. Let's see, I am not good at parallel parking. Um, oh yeah, okay, so we were good. I'm just gonna back it up right here, just a little bit more. Okay, we'll see you once we get back out. Normally we'll be parking in the parking lot, but I think this is fine, it's cool. It's the first time I ever had the car kind of park for myself, and maybe I can enable it here. See you on the way back out. We're back, everyone. There's a car coming up on my left, so I'm gonna see if it lets me enable it. Turns on the blinker and leaves the parking spot. <laughs> nice. First time I've ever, well, maybe second time I've tried that, but this is the first time in version 12 I've tried that. That worked really well. I think that is how the first robo taxis are gonna work for Tesla. They're gonna park on the street. There's gonna be millions of people it can serve by just doing that, and then they can worry about parking lots later and be able to navigate parking lots. That is not a first priority. The first priority is can it go curb the curb? And I think it's gonna be able to do that next year. The point is it just needs to be able to drop someone off right there and pick them up on the curb. Kinda of how an Uber, Uber does. And it's probably gonna be quicker than an Uber. I would say it's like once you know the car, you know it's gonna be linked to your phone, you're gonna be able to open up the door with your phone as a key. It's gonna work so well. You're just gonna be able to hop in, and it's just gonna keep on proceeding, like in, in the middle of traffic and everything. I No, at first I don't think they're gonna do that, but once they refine it, I think it will. So if you're new to this route, the reason we're doing this is because I can't get the route down Main Street unless I do this. So they keep this route consistent, this is why I do that. Uh, they repaved all this. They didn't like not having uh, having um, lines on the road right there. But it still was able to do it. The swerves, now, let's see, let's go ahead and do that. Let's continue on straight. This, yep, you need a break, break, break. Even I have almost messed up on these lights before. So hopefully the car never messes up. We need to go all the way to the very end of Main Street, right here. See if it's gonna do it. Yep. We want to go the shortest route, not necessarily the fastest route. A lot of times it wants to route down here and back over because it's technically quicker. Yeah, I think I'll get, I'll give you guys that. I do think that, um, 
that uh, the, the kayak is slightly affecting it at low speeds. Like this. <laughs> I'm not going to let it do that again. It's the kayak. It, it, okay, I, I think it's the kayak doing that. It thinks there's something a little bit to the right and wants to go over. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, I will give you guys that. I do think the kayak is causing that at low speed. I, it seems to be making some weird behaviors at low speed. Now, hopefully the guy behind me and the bolt, I don't know who that is. It's probably someone... Oh, wait, is that... Did they park? I don't know. Anyways. We're going to have to be a little bit more careful than at slow speeds with the kayak on. I'm going to be doing this the rest of today. And, like, look at this. This is... It has so interest in why it thinks... That, and when we park, I'll show you what that camera looks like. We'll go to some of the dash, dash cam footage. So we'll see what the... Uh, it's the narrow facing camera. The wide angle is also going to see it, obviously. Uh, it's probably seeing a lot more, so it's having a harder time. I'm not sure what exactly it blocks, but I'm pretty sure the wide angle can, and the narrow view can still see both of these lights right now. I'm pretty sure they can still, they can still see those lights. Okay. Well, you tell me if you think that was a kayak or was it just a guy walking across the road. I don't know on that one. But it definitely slowed for the guy walking across the road. Definitely seems to be having a much harder time. I, like, it could be this version. But I think eh, we're going to lean on the kayak. Because this is, this is behavior I haven't seen in a very, very long time. It really doesn't seem like it's version 12. Hey, it's turning right. Let's see if I can get it to go into this parking lot here. Because it needs to take a right. Nah, see, I want... See, that's... You can't go this way. That's impossible. This is a one-way road. Well, well, can I force it to turn? Hey, I force it to turn. Can I get it to go over in the left lane? I can do it. <laughs> now can I get it to go in the parking lot? Uh, no. Okay, well, I couldn't go that far. But yeah, so... Obviously, routing needs help. Like, it just can't figure out how to get into this parking lot. This is a one-way road. That's a one-way road. It can't do that. Like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it can't go the route it wanted to go. Like, it can't, um... It can't go this... Um... Wait, uh... Yeah, it can't go this way. That's impossible. That is, like, an impossible route. Unless... Well, unless you do it illegally, of course. <laughs> but... Yeah, so anyways, let's go park here. What I wanted to show you, guys... Um, did we get zero disengagements on that route? Not zero interventions, but it, it's some some good improvements. I will like link those down below the like button, <laughs> uh, and so you can see. So let's go bring up the dash cam footage here, so you can see what what it looks like. I I don't remember. Someone can remind me how to bring up uh, a service mode. I can't remember off the top of my head. So that's what it looks like. So. This line right here, maybe because it, it's jiggling, maybe that's what's causing it to swerve. See, look, right there, see it's how it swerved? It's interesting, because I don't know if it was the person or this that caused it. So that's what the um, forward-facing camera sees. It's nothing like... Tow hitch doesn't affect it at all. That's not going to affect it. It's this that affects it. So that's interesting. Only at slow speeds, not fast speeds. It's only slow speeds where it affects it. But um, yeah, this is good training data for Tesla. Tell me what you guys think down below. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.